Hello and welcome to Socially Holistic Podcast. Socially Holistic helps coaches and holistic entrepreneurs and women in heart-centered businesses make sense of social media so they can build their own online network and get more clients. As a heart-centered business owner, you do amazing work. Holly's mission in life is to help you help more people. Help us help more women in business with a five-star review of this podcast. Please leave one today over at iTunes. The more women who find out about this podcast, the more heart-centered businesses will be successful. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Social Holistic Podcast. I am on today with Candice Jai and welcome Candice. Hello. Hello. I just want to talk to, to you a little bit about your business and share a little bit about what you do. So tell me about your background. Yeah, sure. Um, so I've always been a really creative, artistic person, very expressive very kind of strong-willed kid uh, that used to get me in trouble quite a lot, and I've kind of just learned to embrace it and not shy away from it. Um, I got a degree in international business and uh, language uh, at university Mm -hmm. and worked in corporate America for about uh, close to 10 years, Um, and I've had a lot of different businesses just to try to, you know, to to get to where I am, Mm -hmm. where I am now. So So would you say that all of your, your corporate background has kind of helped lead you to where you are? today? I would say yes. Um, you know, and if I'm completely honest, probably more in the sense of like learning what I don't want or how I, how I really don't want to run a business, mm-hmm. uh, not, not in a negative way, but just, you know, in the process of learning and figuring out uh, how quote unquote business as usual gets done. I've, I've learned, you know, how, how I want my business to be and how I want to be as an owner and as a manager, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excellent. So tell me a little bit about your business journey. How did you get to where you are today? Sure. Yeah. So like I said, I started in corporate America. I went to university right out of high school, which is about age 18 here. Mm-hmm. was in corporate America for about 10 years uh, in a variety of different roles. I did management, finance, and a lot of different things. And luckily that kind of afforded me the opportunity to learn a lot and learn mm-hmm. about a lot of different areas. After being in corporate America for about 10 years, I just really realized Actually, right before, or I should say right after I had started an MBA program, which is a Master's of Business Administration, mm-hmm. it, thinking, you know, oh, well, it's, it's probably just that I'm in these lower positions. That's probably why I'm not happy or fulfilled and uh, things like that. So I started an MBA and pretty quickly realized that, no, it had nothing to do with that. It was just that it was not the right environment for me. Mm-hmm. So um, I had moved to Seattle by this time and uh, had started Art School at the Garden Institute of Seattle in commercial photography. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd always loved photography, and it it really bloomed out of that. I I went with more commercial photography versus directly art photography because, if I'm completely honest, I was concerned about being able to make a living and pay my bills. Mm -hmm. And I quickly realized that, you know, it's not any easier, (laughs) uh, you know, regardless of which direction you go. And... um, Working commercially, I mean, the thing is, when you work with businesses and advertisers, they have certain specs they have to meet, and they have a job they have to do, which means they need you to do something very specific. So for me, it really took a lot of the joy out of it, and I realized within a couple of years that that wasn't wasn't exactly where I wanted to go with my photography. Mm -hmm. You know, in the process of all that, I had started several small businesses, getting to now. I did graphic and web design for a while. I was a virtual assistant for a period, and some of these things did overlap. And then I actually had a pretty successful natural skincare line that I discontinued about, well, it's been about two years now Mm -hmm. um, that I discontinued that. And sort of, you know, I eventually realized that, you know, I love art, and I've always known that I loved art, but art and creativity was always going to be a huge pillar in my life and a huge part of who I am, but that I'm also multi-passionate and I'm just one of those people that I, like down in my core, I need more than one thing going on at all times. That's just how I am. And so out of all of that, Good My Soul was actually born and it had several different names before, took a lot of terms, uh, terms I should say, started out. You know, under a different name, like I said, as more of a personal blog, talking about a lot of different things in my life because I was really at a point where I was kind of trying to figure out what's next and what direction I wanted to go next. Um, And I've always known I wanted to work for myself since I was, literally since I was a child. I had all these made-up businesses when I was a kid. (laughs) I love that. Uh, I'm I'm from a very entrepreneurial family. That's excellent. I think it makes sense if you know that. Both of my parents work for themselves and have for a long time, things like that. But business has always interested me. But not doing business 
in the way that, like I said, business as usual or that is traditionally done, but more, you know, finding a way to do it that's holistic because I'm a big believer in taking a holistic approach to everything, and I don't, I don't really believe one aspect of your life really works while other aspects of your life are totally suffering. I, I person, mm-hmm. My personal belief is it kind of all has to go together. Mm-hmm. And so for me to do business, I really need it to be holistic and be able to present myself in an authentic way. For me, if I'm going to be a business for myself, you know, business for yourself, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of extra work. And if you're just doing it to earn money, my personal feeling is make life easier on yourself. Go get a job that's just a paycheck and pays your insurance mm-hmm. and have the rest of your life to do what you want to do you know, do what you want to do, do your Mm -hmm. hobbies. So for me, my business really had to work for me and work for my life and work in a way that felt good to me and felt authentic to me and brought me a lot of joy. And like I said, for me, it's really kind of all has to work together. So I had a really big passion. I realized for, you know, really putting yourself and your expression into your business and putting yourself out there. And self-expression has just always been such a big part of my life. So, you know, if you put all that together (laughs) and fast forward to now, I work not entirely, but mostly with other multi passionates, Mm -hmm. you know, on branding and just bringing that true authentic expression to their business. You know, and like I said, I believe that when you're expressing who you are, it really bleeds over into other areas of your life and helps you live a more joyful life. And as long as you're working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, you know, it, it should be something you love. I agree. I agree. That's so important, especially when it's your own business. Oh, yeah, exactly. I always tell people, I'm like, if you're doing it just for the money, do not start your own business. It's, yeah. You know. Excruciatingly painful. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so tell me about uh, your work with multi-passionate branding. I, I love the concept of your website, Good in My Soul, and how you your focus is on multi-passionate people. How would you define multi-passionate people? Well, I would say, you know, most people, it, it, most well-rounded people are going to have more than one interest. I've, I've only ever met a couple of people in my entire life that are, you know, have one singular focus on everything that they do. But to mm-hmm. me, someone who's a true multi-passionate, not only do they have those multi-passionate interests, but they actively pursue multiple multiple things at one time because, you know, depending on the person, some multi-passionates tend to have an interest for a while and then you know, maybe a few years down the road or a few months down the road, depending on the interest, it, things will switch up, mm-hmm. and that's fine. But I think really, a multi as a multi passionate myself, I would say a true multi passionate really has that core need, like I do, to really have more than one thing going at once to stay balanced. Because for me, I find that to be very true. Like I need more than one thing mm-hmm. to, to feel balanced and to not feel like you know get really obsessive about one thing or put other areas of my life on hold and things like that. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I would say a true multi-passion is somebody that not only do you have the multiple interests and you pursue more than one thing at a time, but you have that, like, true core need to do more than one thing. Okay. And does part of your work help people figure out how to balance all of these needs and interests in their life? Yeah, it does. And, you know, my my business really focuses more on the business aspect of okay. things more than you know, personal life, but like I said before, I'm a big believer that everything is holistic and mm-hmm. everything bleeds over. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what I focus on mainly is the business aspect of things uh, and, and really how to pull all that in. I actually just created a course a couple of weeks ago, and I just put this out, and it's 30 Days to Glowing Self-Expression, which if you go to my website is, is kind of like my binding thing. It's my common thread of the glowing self-expression. Mm-hmm. And what I do in that course is really let people, I basically guide them and give them prompts and give them information, but a lot of it is sort of inner work, possibly journaling if that's how they work, that really helps them figure out what glowing self-expression is for them. Because the thing is, it's going to be something different for every person. But at its core, my feeling is that glowing self-expression is when you are in a state where you are so expressed and you're so fully into who you are Mm -hmm. at your core and you're sharing that with people so vividly that people can feel the glow. You know how they'll say pregnant women have a glow? Well, it's it's, sort of the the same idea in theory. (laughs) Less child and more business. Yes. (laughs) The idea being that, you know, when you really are being who you truly are and Mm -hmm. you're really expressing who you are and you figured out the best channel for yourself to do that in, that people can almost feel that in what you do and what you say, whether it be on social media, on a mm-hmm. blog, on your website, in video, you know, whatever, 
whatever methods you choose, working with clients for your services. So that's what that course is all about, really helping people to figure out, giving them the prompts to do the inner work and mm-hmm. the intro, leading them into that, mm-hmm. and then giving them the space to, to do it themselves. And I purposely placed it at a low price point. Uh, it's it's twenty seven US, I believe. Okay. So you know, I purposely placed it at that price point so that people can access it because I really feel that in order to be really really strong in your business mm-hmm. and not have this need to go to everybody else to figure out what works for you, mm-hmm. like that's your starting point. Yes, I agree. I agree. I run occasionally a social media, a course on social media and how to use social media for your business. And the very starting point for me is to get clear on who you are, because if you don't know who that is, you don't know how to express that online. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, that's, um, you know, like I said, it sounds like our courses have a similar aim, which is to help people figure out, you know, when you really get really deep in there, Mm. figure out who you are. Figuring out your why becomes easy, and once you figure out those two things, figuring out everything else becomes significantly less struggle. I agree. And a lot of people struggle with that, you know, who am I and what makes me unique, and they just don't have any idea how to... Where to start. Yeah, where to start. Well, I mean, what questions do I ask? What do I focus on? Like, how do I figure this out? Exactly. So I think I think your course is perfect for helping people get started with that because that's such a foundation of your business. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I, I purposely worked through it myself before I released it mm-hmm. um, to make sure that it was gonna, you know, that I thought that it would work for people and that it, you know, led like I said, led people in, mm-hmm. but doesn't lead you directly. Uh, you know, I don't want to lead anybody in into what I think their self expression might be. I want to make sure it was very open and very clear that you mm-hmm. know you're leading yourself into this. I'm, you know, I'm providing the tools. I'm providing the gateway, but then. You know, you're really doing the work because I want people to feel like I feel in my business, which is that, you know, I've done the work to get here. I've mm-hmm. done the work to figure out what makes me tick and what really is my core, at my core being, you know, my core reason for being. Right. Uh, and I want other people to feel like they have that ownership in their business as well. Great, great. So what are the dangers, you would say, for multi-passionates and for other business owners in trying to figure this out on their own? Well, I think there are a few different things. You know, one of the big things I think particularly for multi-passionates, um, and, and if you're a multi-passionate and you've been trying to make a go of it, mm. you probably it's become a lot more accepted now, obviously. But, you know, up until recently, anytime you tried to work with anybody, they would say you have to find a niche, you have to find a niche, you have yes. to find a niche, which is completely contrary to, you know, what you're doing as a multi-passionate. So I would say... That can kind of get you down a little bit, um, and not only can it get you down, but in that and in trying to make force yourself to do that and force yourself to fit into that box comes a lot of confusion, honestly, and wasted time. You know, on top of which, it also brings a lot of struggle. Um, and, and I would like to say too that I think there actually is value in making mistakes and learning from them. I'm a big believer that you know every mistake you make, you you get these experiences for a reason because you're supposed to learn something from them. That might personally. Totally agree with that. Um, (laughs) But, you know, when I look back at the time I spent trying to force myself to do the quote-unquote right thing the right way, Mm -hmm. you know, if I would have trusted myself and and taken the time to clarify my own expression at the onset and been willing to honor that, um, I feel like I could have saved myself a lot of that confusion, frustration, and time. And not only for myself, but for the people who, who follow what I do, who followed me when it was just a blog. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and help them understand more what was going on. Honestly, confusion and wasted time, just the struggle of it is probably the biggest thing. I'm someone that really values my time. Yes. Um, possibly even more than money. And, mm-hmm. you know, I love my work. I really do. But I'm a believer that you have to be a person first and honor what you need in your life to be a whole person before you can really help people and be a whole whole contributor, I should say, to your business. And if you're wasting all that time struggling on these other things, that really if you give yourself time to figure out your expression and time to figure out who you are and how you work, you know, I'm not saying it's going to give you 100% of the answers, but it's going to give you a really good head start. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And that goes back to your whole holistic approach to business. Yeah, exactly. So what would you say are your top tips for multi-passionates in business? 
I would say that my top tips are, number one, don't listen to people who want to tell you that you have to find a niche. You have to find a niche. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say that you do need to have what I call a common thread, which is not necessarily a niche. But you need to have be able to figure out what brings all those things together. And when I work with people, that's what I help people figure out. Um, you know, I work with lots of different clients who, you know, are like, God, I want to do this, and I want to do that, and I want to do this, but I just don't understand how to bring it together. Hmm. At which point I can usually say, well, it sounds to me like at the core of all of this is, you know, X, Y, Z, and mm-hmm. that's sort of your purpose. And so that becomes the common thread. But I would say, honestly, that, that it's really important to figure that out. Yes. Figure out that common thread for yourself. And like I said, it's not a niche, but... As a multi-passionate, if you have multiple interests, just for your readers and so people understand what you're doing, because you have to keep in mind that everybody that comes to your website isn't going to, you know, they need to be able to automatically kind of understand what you're about and what your thing is. Right. Um, and the best way to do that, and the easiest way to do that, is to find the common thread in everything that you do. Like, for me, my common thread is glowing self-expression. So, you know, I do the multi-passionate branding. I'm also an artist. You know, I work on a lot of different projects within that, but it's all about Mm self-expression in your business. Um, Like I said, trust yourself. I think that's really important. Um, Trust trust that you know when you're core, if you're a multi-passionate, and you know when you're core that those are the things that you're supposed to bring together, Mm -hmm. um, you know, as a business. And, you know, the reality is, is be ready to defend it, because unfortunately, depending on where you go, not everybody's going to embrace it just yet. Mm -hmm. Be willing to defend it as far as I'm not saying to get in a debate with somebody because, honestly, I don't see anything productive coming from that. But be willing to explain these things Mm -hmm. and explain, you know, well, why do you think you're multi-passionate? Well, why do you have all these interests? Like, what is it, you know, what does it matter? If you can answer that question for people, it's going to lead to a lot fewer, I don't want to say debates, but a a, a lot less confrontation, I guess you could say, around the issue. Yeah, and I like what you said about having that kind of common thread or common denominator because once you can figure out how to link together all of your different interests then that it's so much easier to explain to people who you are and what you do even though you do a number of different things exactly exactly Um, and other than that I would say probably just you know and and, I mean this kind of makes sense given, given my theory and what I do but just really let people see your expression if you're an introvert you know so oftentimes especially with you know business and social media I kind of feel like people who are introverts maybe get pushed aside a little bit, and not mm. not intentionally, but there's like this whole focus on being very outgoing and gregarious and making all these connections, which is, is great. Yeah. Uh, you know, but if you're an introvert, it's okay to be an introvert. If you're really outgoing and quirky, it's okay to be quirky. I'm kind of weird, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, you know, I think the right people, the people that should be connecting with you, the people who are going to who you're going to actually forge real relationships with Mm -hmm. will want to connect with you because they'll see part of themselves in you probably. I agree. And and once you get clear, as you've already said, on who you are and you can express that clearly online, it will make it so much easier for your core audience to connect with you because they'll know exactly what you're about. Exactly. They'll know exactly what you're about. And I think that, you know, again, when you're willing to, to say, look, this is who I am, you know, this is what I do, and this is why I do it, this is my expression, you know, whether that's shy, super outgoing, somewhere in the middle, whatever. I think people, I think especially now, as big as social media is and as big as the internet is and how often we all use it, people have gotten very good at figuring out when you're lying. Yeah. And if, if you're trying to be something you're not because it's worked for somebody else, you know, people are going to figure that out and then that can lead to people not trusting you, which of course is, is definitely not something you want because it's a whole lot build, harder to build it back up than it is to form it in the first place. I agree. Not to mention, you know, don't, don't try to be somebody else. All, anytime someone gives you advice as far as, you know, oh, this is exactly what you should do or this is exactly how you should present yourself, mm-hmm. all they're telling you is that's what worked for them. Exactly. Which may or may not work for you. <laughs> exactly. Great. Those those are my probably biggest tips is just, you know, start at those bare bones things and it makes the others a lot easier to figure out and they'll fall into place easier by figuring, by taking the time to really figure that out. And if that means you need to step back for a week or two weeks or even a month, then I personally feel like that is a better investment of your time to take that time Mm -hmm. than to keep pushing against the current. Yeah. 
I mean, this really is foundation work that you're that you're doing with business owners. Yeah, exactly. It's it's really all about foundation work, and you know, I work with people kind of all along the spectrum of branding. People who are literally just beginning their business, and people who are a little further along. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but I my favorite part of it is really working with the people who are you know who have those aha moments and get to figure out exactly you know, what they're doing, and I guess in the earlier phases, because mm-hmm. I love seeing people figure out, like, oh, God, okay, this is it, this is exactly what I want to do, and this is how I can do it, and it doesn't have to be a struggle. It's great. That must be really, really satisfying. It is very satisfying, yeah. I mean, it's, the, you know, it's one of those things, it's it's so funny, because um, when I was in college, I actually studied abroad, and I did some teaching for a while, and I was like, oh, God, I will never teach again, <laughs> you know, and, but it's funny, because I think, even sometimes the things that you think, God, I would never want to do that. Mm. Once you figure out exactly how you want to do it, mm. it gives you a different perspective. Because I feel like a lot of what I'm doing, not only am I consulting with people and giving people ideas and prompting that, but a lot of it is teaching, really. Yeah. And uh, I love it. So That's great. Yeah. So what does a typical work day look like for you? You know, I'm one of those people that I really, like, I get very bored very fast with mm-hmm. routine. So I purposely have a serious variety of things that I do in my day. I don't have necessarily a specific, you know, like, oh, this is what I do at this time, and then following that, I do this. Uh, That just doesn't work for me personally. Now, that might work wonderfully for others. I mean, I know people who stick to a very specific schedule and swear by it. For me, that's never really felt right. Um, I'm someone that I, like I said, I get bored with it, so I need a lot of variety, and I need what I call free space. Mm. So. for me to stay focused and inspired and, you know, to really hit things head on. So the only real quote unquote thing that I have is I do check my email very first thing in the morning. And, you know, I think a lot of people say, oh, that doesn't work for me because it distracts from my productivity and I, you know, sort of go down the rabbit hole and I can completely <laughs> see how that would be the case. I've tried going that direction before. For me personally, if I don't go ahead and just do it first thing in the morning, it will, it will bug me all day. <laughs> So that's, that's my only real quote-unquote routine. Beyond that, it really just depends on the day as far as what I'm doing. I might be shooting and editing videos uh, for my YouTube or blog. I could be writing blog posts. I could be doing website maintenance. Uh, you know, I might also be doing social media. Uh, it, it depends a lot on what's going on. I try, and I'm not always very good at this, but I try to be pretty insistent on sticking to... Monday through Friday as much as possible. I'm one of those people that I can, I can and have in the past become a workaholic, yeah. and I will work sun up to sundown every single day. Oh, I've done that before. And that's not good for you. I don't recommend anyone do that in their business yeah. ever. So whether you take off weekends or middle of the week or something, give yourself some time. But that's that's something that works for me is to try to keep everything Monday through Friday mm. for the most part. If I'm launching a product, I might fudge a little there, but I I try very hard to stay with that. That's good. Uh, other than that, I find I'm really productive if I take a lot of breaks. So I'll work normally no more than about two, two and a half hours in a spot and then take a break, whether it be just to get up and walk around, get up and get a glass of water, mm. play with the cat, maybe, you know, do something a little bit more mundane like dishes or laundry or something like <laughs> that. I find that I, that kind of helps me to mentally reset. Yeah. Beyond that, I know myself that I I have an afternoon slump. I'm a morning person. Mm. So I have an afternoon slump between about 3 and 5. And because of that, I used to try to really push myself through it, push myself through it. And I'll work through it if I'm awake. But I've decided, you know, in the past couple of years, and I've found that this has been very helpful for me, to be okay with the fact that I'm less productive during those hours. If I give myself that, I'm a lot more productive in the other time that I'm working. So it's not a problem. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know how much routine I would call any of that, but <laughs> <laughs> no. And I think one of the most important things is figuring out what at what point in the day you have the most energy and what point in the day you have the least energy, and just being true to that. Exactly, because I know tons of people who are like, I'm not a morning person. I do best if I work from ten to midnight, and if that's the case, then by all means, go for it. I'm one of those <laughs> people that I like to to work early in the morning through about maybe one one thirty take a little break, and then I'll pick up maybe for a couple of hours later. Yeah, that makes sense. And that goes back again to your work with getting to know who you are. Exactly. I mean, it's all about awareness and really being true to yourself and accepting that. So what would you say are the top business tools that you use most? Well, I 
I'm kind of a minimalist just by nature. I'm not one to use a, a ton of tools. As far as social media, I'm on um, all the big ones. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Google+, Plus, YouTube. As far as actual tools I use, though, there's only a couple. I do use Hoopsuite, oh, and yes. I use that to schedule some things. Now, I'll say right now I'm not a fan of scheduling everything. Mm-hmm. I know some people do that, and to each their own. Um, that doesn't feel authentic for me. Yeah. But I will schedule a few things so that I can spend the majority of my day or my daily time because I give myself a limit on social media so so that I don't go down the rabbit hole and right. you know, really destroy the whole, whole rest of what I would like to get done that day. You know, so that I can spend the majority of my time on social media interacting and meeting new people rather than, you know, rushing around like a chicken with my head cut off trying to find links to share with people during that time. So I use Hootsuite when I schedule things. I also use uh, something online. It's called Workflowy. Uh, And I talk about this on my website. So if anybody's, you know, followed my blog for a while, they've probably heard of this. But it's Workflowy, W-O-R-K-F-L-O-W-Y. And it's a free online application basically it's like it's basically like an online notepad Mm -hmm. it's nothing big no no like bells and whistles it's pretty basic but for me i tend to get a million ideas that will come to me randomly and usually while i'm trying to do something else if i don't either get them down i'll either a forget because i'm a very forgetful person Mm -hmm. or i'll get completely sidetracked from what i'm working on and go off into complete left field on this other thing so i use it uh not only to jot down my ideas so that i can I know if I just get it down there and put down what I'm thinking, then, then mentally I can move on and let it go. That's really That's smart. Until I'm done with whatever I'm working on or whenever I'm ready to start said project. It also gives me a chance to get that stuff out because, you know, sometimes you have a million ideas and you're like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this other thing instead. And it gives you an opportunity to get that out and kind of review that later to figure out what might be the best project to be working on. Mm-hmm. But beyond that, it's also really great to use if you're compiling all your information in one place, like you're researching for a big project or for a blog or whatever. Um, but like I said, that's that's free. Um, yeah. So that's, that's something I use a lot. I use Google Calendars quite a bit. I kind of put everything in there from my meetings to my daily tasks. For me, it's easier to have it all in one place. I've bought tons of planners before with the idea that I'm going to use them. And I'll either never pick them up again or I'll fill them out and then don't actually look at them for four months. So I don't know why. But for me, using an online calendar is a lot easier at this point than trying to use, like, a paper planner or right. anything like that. I put so most things in my Google Calendar. Okay. Um, and that kind of – I look at that periodically throughout the day to be like, okay, how much do I have left? You know, is – yeah, because sometimes a project will take a lot longer than you think it will. Sometimes a blog post will take a lot longer mm-hmm. to get than you think it will. So if you've got ten things on your list, you're like, yeah, okay, there's no chance I'm getting all these today. Right. Uh, you know, I can go in there and just click on the item, move it around, change it around. You know, it, it makes it very easy. Um, and Google Calendars is completely free. So for anyone who's interested in doing that, you can have multiple calendars. I have my personal calendar, my work count, you know, my meeting calendar, mm-hmm. uh, social media calendar, my website maintenance calendar. So I can see it's color coded because I'm, I mean, I'm a very visual person. Yeah. So for me, that works really, really well. Other than that, let's see, I, probably only two other things I use for my emails. I use MailChimp. Okay. And that's exactly what I need it to for now. Eventually I probably will change to something like Infusionsoft or something. But for now it's, it does what I need it to do. It gives me a lot of flexibility. It's really easy to use. Um, and it's very affordable, very affordable. Yeah. I mean, MailChimp, you can have the free account for, I think it's like 2,000. I don't have the free account anymore. I moved up from that. But I think it's like 2,000 subscribers or something. Yeah, I think so that's it. It's, it's, a, it's a really good thing, I would say, especially if you're just starting out, to go for something that's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. Um, I guess that would be my other tip for people in business in general is, you know, it's great to have all the bells and whistles and all the gadgets, but be realistic uh, when you're starting out because you don't want to get yourself – in a hole, and then have that distract you from being able to really put your best stuff out there. Yeah. Uh, my final tool that I use is a uh, website called Just Unfollow, and you can get, uh, there's a free account, there's also a paid account, which the paid account, like anything, opens up more, more features for you. I use the free account because I feel like it's all I need. It basically, I go in once a week to do it with a little cl- uh, Twitter cleanup, mm-hmm. and that's what I use it for. There are lots of other features you can go in. If you use a paid option, you can sort of auto-follow and unfollow. Now, I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, me neither. 
like I said, I just use it basically for, for Twitter Twitter cleanup. If I've, you know, followed somebody a long time ago and they eventually never follow me back, then, you know, I'm not going to clean that up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, other than that, though, those are pretty much the only tools I can think of off the top of my head mm-hmm. uh, that I use really at all. I used, um, oh gosh, what was it called? Pingraphy, I believe, for a while. Mm-hmm. That like schedule pins. Yeah. You know, it was okay. It was now. I was. Um, I got in on it when it was in the beta phase, so it was super, super new. Yeah, they were still kind of working out some kinks and things. So just you know, to to be fair to them, but it also gave you the option to have a free account at that time. And I thought, well, hey, it's free. You know, I'll I'll give it a whirl. Um, it had a few little clunks in it at that time, but my understanding is they've improved it a lot since then. They've also done away with the free account, so. Okay. It, you have to decide you're willing to pay for it. Personally, I really like the setup and the infrastructure of Hootsuite, and I would love for Hootsuite to to work with Pinterest and get that going. I agree. I agree. I've been using Hootsuite for years, and I absolutely love it, but I use it mostly for Twitter. Yeah, I use it mostly for Twitter, a little for Facebook, mm-hmm. but mostly, mostly for Twitter. Um, and I, like I said, I would love to be able to. It would help me personally with my schedule. Yeah. Um, you know, to go in and be able to to schedule those to go in if, if they were able to work with Pinterest to do that because I understand that they have to work with them to, yeah. to make that occur. You know, but yeah, those are the only tools I use. I'm like I said, I tend to be kind of a minimalist. I don't want to have, I don't need like everything, every little gadget with every bell and whistle. And my my theory is less is kind of more. Yeah, um, and that's how I am in my personal life and in my business. I don't think you need to have every single every single thing out there. That makes sense. So what about, I focus on what I consider to be the most high value things. Yeah. And it seems, it seems that you've got kind of something for all of the basic things. So you're pretty much covered with all that. Yeah. And I love what you said about workflow because it's something that I've heard recommended before and I've checked it out and I looked at it and I thought, mm, would I really use this? So it's kind of yeah. like on my radar, but I'm not using it. So I, I love to hear about what you're using it for. Yeah, I, you know, I, I was like that when I first found out. I was like, you know, it feels like a good idea, but I don't know if I would actually use this. And then I was like, well, you know, it's free, so I'm going to try it for a couple of weeks. And worst case scenario, I delete the account and move on. Yeah. And I found, honestly, particularly, like I said, to jot ideas down and get that down, because I'm one of those people, like, I never have paper and pen on me. And if, even if I did, quite honestly, I would probably lose the list anyway. <laughs> um, so it's really good for me to have it uh, on there. And then, like I said, it's online. It's a it's a website-based application right. so you can get to it from any computer any smartphone any of that and it's really easy to go in there and it basically uh, puts it in outline form mm-hmm. so you can go in and, and, and keep things really really organized and i've found i've used it like i said for research i've used it even when i'm just brainstorming on a project like the the uh, 30 days of take a self-expression i was just talking about the course i just finished mm-hmm. i used it to really like sort of brainstorm and come up with the format of that and get it pretty much outline completely where all I had to do was go in and literally just put in, put together the content and put it in the correct format and all of that. So I find it very useful for things like that, you know, especially if you're going to be in multiple places where you're going to be working on multiple machines and, um, and like I said, it's free. So. Right. It's worth a try. Exactly. What about outsourcing? Do you outsource any parts of your business? Presently, I don't. Um, I'm still at the point where I'm able to manage my business as just myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, eventually, I most definitely will be outsourcing a few things. I don't want to outsource a ton of things or have a huge team, just personally, myself. Um, I would like to have a an assistant, for sure, at some point to handle some of the, some of the more, more basic things, um, you know, email and things like that. And I would it, love to find somebody who is really good at SEO because I'll be I'll be the first to say I've studied it yeah. and learned a lot, but it's definitely not my strongest suit. Yeah, uh, at all. <laughs> so and especially I, if it's something you don't enjoy, then it's worth outsourcing. That's the thing. It, it, exactly. And that would be my recommendation if anybody's considering outsourcing. Like, what do you? What are you like? Oh God, I have to do this again. You know, whatever. If, if it's something like that, and you're in a position where you can, because of course, if you're starting out, you may not be in a financial position to do that. As I said before, I'm not a believer in, you know, creating more struggle. Right. So if it's going to be a struggle, you know. Do the best you can until until you're at that point. But definitely, if you're going to outsource, outsource the things that you don't like because those are the things, honestly, that are probably going to be the biggest time drain in my experience mm-hmm. and are going to end up taking you away from being able to do the projects and the things that you love doing. 
you know, the things that got you in your business in the first place. So at the moment, I'm not outsourcing anything because it's still manageable for me. Um, I've worked my business in a way that it's very manageable for me to do it as it is because I had a day job for forever. Right. Um, I still actually have a contract position currently that, um, you know, it's, it's part time, but it's, you know, it's more in the management. It's like virtual assistant, executive mm-hmm. assistant type work that I do to supplement things. So, um, and I always tell people, you know, don't be afraid to do that. There's yeah. nothing, it does not make you less of a person or less of a business person to make sure that your base needs are taken care of so that you're not stressed out in what you do. I agree. And I think that that's something that a lot of people are fearful about when setting up a new business because they think it's got to be all or nothing. It's either I'm just, I've do, got a job or I'm doing my business full time. And they don't realize that there's kind of a halfway point that you can work together to meet your basic needs. Exactly. And, you know, I, you know, some people have said this and, you know, others, I guess, probably disagree. But, you know, I really feel like it's, it doesn't do you any favors to put so much stress on your, not only yourself, but on a new business. Yeah, you know, because the reality is it's very hard to have a business that just hits the ground running. Yeah. Um, there's usually a couple of years of really blood, sweat, and tears that <laughs> into getting things up and going, you know, before you can get to that. And I would just emphasize that it's, a, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Thank you very much for bringing that up. I think that's really important. So do you have any business mentors or are there any women in business who inspire you? Uh, you know, I follow a few different people, um, and I have one group, of one small group of women that I work with. We've sort of formed our own little um, our own little mastermind, mm-hmm. and I work with those ladies, pretty much meet them every week virtually because we're kind of spread all over the globe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, there's so many opportunities for things like that now. That's the thing is the Internet has really brought us so many opportunities for that sort of thing to work with people that you, you may never meet otherwise. Right. But as far as people I really listen to and, and people that I consistently follow, um, Natalie Lussier is one. If people don't know who that is, mm-hmm. um, she's a business owner. She's really techie, um, which I really love. And pretty much, like I said, I'm not a natural techie. I'm a good learner, <laughs> good <laughs> replicator, but technology is something that does not come naturally to me, for sure. But she's very honest and uh, very, very informative. And like I said, particularly for me, she helps me a lot with things around technology because it's not my strongest suit. And that's one thing I would say. If there are things that you're really not great at but you just can't afford to outsource just yet, look for people to follow who are good at the things that you're not. Yeah. And and can present it in a way that makes sense to you because not everybody can. Yes, exactly. Um, Some people get caught up in their own jargon and they don't know how to teach people who don't. You know, it's, it's great that you know all of that, but if the people you're talking to have no idea what that means, it's not really very helpful, but she's very good about being very, very down to earth. Um, and her website is natalielussier.com. It's L-U-S-S-I-E-R. So okay. if, you, if you Google her, you'll find her everywhere. Another person that I follow is a woman named Laura Hollick. She's Canadian. Mm-hmm. She's built, and you know, I really respect her because she's built an entire business out of her own self-expression and doing her own version of art. And I really admire that. Um, you know, she's who she is and she does things her own way. And I just, I really like that. I really admire her. She's a fellow creative. She's an artist of sorts as well. Mm -hmm. And she's just really found a way to make it really work for her. Mm -hmm. Um, and personally, I really respect that because I try to follow a mix of people who are, who are more pure business and who, who like Laura Hollick. She is about business, but she's also about sort of the same thing that I am as far as like, you know, Really bringing who you are into it and figuring out what you do yeah, um, and how you do it and what's going to work best for you. Because the way I work is probably not going to work for everybody. And, you know, the way she works is probably not going to work for everybody. The way, exactly the way she works may not work for me. Mm-hmm. So I really respect her because of that. There's also another person um, that I follow who, she's an artist, and her name is Flora Boley, and I'm sure a lot of people probably know who she is at this yeah. point. But if you don't, you can find her website, floraspoley.com, I believe, B-O-W-L-E-Y. Okay. Anyway, like I said, she's an artist, but I've worked with her in the past. She has an e-course that I would highly recommend if you're either an artist professionally or you just want to you know, open up and be more expressive for yourself. But I really love, she has a very free-form approach to work in life. Very free form, yet very connected. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm really drawn to that in people. I, I just love the way that she works her business so that, you know, it's her business and she's doing what she loves. But, you know, she's like, look, this is, I'm not just an artist because I go into the studio. 
this is my lifestyle. This is who I am. Mm -hmm. Like she brings what she does. It's very holistic, I guess I could say. Uh, And then the next person I would probably mention is Leonie Dawson, which most people are going to know her. Yeah. Um, She was Goddess Leonie before, and her website is amazing. It's either Amazing Biz and Life Academy or Amazing Life and Biz Academy. I should really know that. I think it's Biz and Life. Yeah. That's what I thought. I was like, I feel, I get it backwards every time. (laughs) Um, But yeah, like I said, she's done the exact opposite of what everybody preaches about, about a niche, and she's made it work for her in her life. I mean, she's done very well. Yeah. And, you know, I, I really respect that she was like, look, this is how I want my business to run, and I'm willing to commit the time it's going to take to make that happen and to make it happen in the way that works for me. And I really respect that. So I think, really, I'm more inspired by people who are just very real and authentic in their business, who make their dreams happen their own way, things like that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a believer that knowledge can be learned, and hard is either there or it's not. Yeah, Exactly. So that's kind of what I'm drawn to is the people that I can feel, like I said, what I've termed as glowing self-expression. I can feel their glow, you know? Yeah. And it goes back to what you said about how if you're not passionate about your business and you're just doing it because you think it'll bring in the money, don't. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, don't, really. No, yeah. It'll drive yourself crazy and <laughs> it would be so much easier to just go get a paycheck. Yeah, exactly. Candice, it was so lovely to have you on the podcast today. It was so great to talk to you, and I love all of the tips that you shared in, in your business journey. Where can people find you online so they can connect with you? Absolutely. Like I said, I'm on all the major ones. So Twitter is my name, Candice Jai. It's C-A-N-D-A-C-E-N-D-I-A-Y-E, um, just all together, uh, of course. And then Facebook, I'm on Facebook as Good In My Soul. Uh, Google Plus is just my name, Candice Jai. Um, probably the only one on there, or one of you. <laughs> uh, Pinterest, also Candice Jai, just like I said on Twitter. And I am on YouTube as Candice Jai. So um, it's a difficult name. Like I said, it's N-D-I-A-Y-E. And if you have any trouble finding any of that, you can just go to my website, goodmysoul.com, and over in the right uh, sidebar, there's links to all of that. So it'll just whisk you right there, and you don't even have to figure out how to spell my name. <laughs> Great. And I'll include so, all these links in the show notes as well. Exactly. And like I said, I'm a member of uh, Leonie's Academy, so if anybody out there listening is, I would love to connect you connect with you there as well. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Candice. It was so great to talk to you today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much for listening to the Socially Holistic Podcast with your host, Holly Wharton. Please help us help more women in business by giving us a five-star review of this podcast. The more women who find out about this podcast, the more successful businesses there will be. So please leave a five-star review today over at iTunes. Thank you.